And that problem is specifically the role of the accelerating feedback dynamics that increase the pace and severity of climate change and drive it outside the predictions of most of the models that we have running at the moment. They tend to work on more linear processes, more equilibrium processes that are appropriate when looking at the ancient changing patterns of weather and climate. But in this situation, the change is running faster and outside the prediction parameters of our model. So it's to the exploration of feedback processes and their effects on the climate that I want to present this morning as radically as I can. Let's start at the very beginning. Paul sense that the impact of the human species on the climate has really been absolutely minimal through this early stage. And we have seen from the early development of humanoids and then the first moderns and through here, really a very small population held in balance within the natural environment until we begin to move to around the 15, 1600s, trading base, bringing in resources from other parts of the world and then the discovery of fossil energy, energy from yesterday, yesterday's sunlight buried in the darkness of the underworld, brought to the surface and liberated for today's generation to benefit from yesterday's sequestration of atmospheric carbon. And that set off an energy input that escalated the population, which required more energy, which escalated the population, which required more energy, which escalated the population. Very interesting. This is taken from Al Gore's slide set, and I'm very grateful to him for permission to use it. But it is very interesting. Do you see here that the scale gets wider and wider from many, many thousands, as it were, per unit back there. And then we get to 1,000 in this unit, and here, and then this is 150 years. If you get the same scale all the way around, this would simply go vertical. It's not a hockey stick, it's a right angle. And it's interesting that the scale pulls up, makes it look fairly benign as an explosion. It's a swarm, it's a plane. And, and by the way, everybody stops at the top of this curve. Do you notice that? And I had a word with Dennis Meadows, who was responsible for the updating of the Club of Rome's reports on the limit to growth, and asked him why they had missed out the death rate curve from their work when Jay Forrester, who was the supervisor of the whole project, always put the death curves in, the death rate curves. He never gave me a proper answer to that, but I'll, I'll explore this with you. When a population curve like this reaches a peak that is such an extraordinary explosion, and I heard someone in the science group say, and it stabilizes at about 9.6 billion, give or take. It doesn't stabilize. Most curves like this go into an immediate collapse again. And then they can either come down to a minimalist population or oscillate. Going up to a smooth peak and then stabilizing at the peak population is very, very rare. So we've got problems ahead. Anyway, oh, by the way, the energy use per head has also increased during this time. So if we plot the energy available and energy used by this swarm, it goes way off the top of the screen. And of course, the more energy we use, the more pollution we put out, the more pollution we put out, the more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, and the more problems we have. Right. Pollution, what you see is not what I'm talking about. It's what we don't see in the pollution that does the damage. The particulates wash out again quite quickly. The carbon dioxide, the sulfur gases, the nitrous gases stay in the atmosphere. And those are the greenhouse gases, of course, that create the heating. What's the history? Many of you will know the pattern of the change in carbon dioxide from the warmer interglacial to the icy glacial conditions. Warmer, icy, warmer, icy, warmer, 
Odyssey, Borla, and then we got going. You would expect this to be just dithering around like this and going down again, and we move towards the next cooling period slightly. Although actually there is a window of about 30 to 50,000 years in this process in which the climate stays fairly stable for the, for the next significant period. It's quite unusual in the sequence. But then we got to work and what we call the anthropogenic, it's the what we done. I, I love the scientific terms that you can have to translate into common English. The anthropogenic output of carbon dioxide takes us up to where we are today, 2001, uh, about 380 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is the way the scientists measure it. <coughs> where we're at today, 2008. If you add on the effect of the other greenhouse gases that we put up there, about, I can't even reach up yet, uh, about 445, 450 parts per million. If we go on doing what we're doing, by the end of the century, it'll be virtually off the scale. Oh, and that's not counting bringing in the output from the burning forests of the Amazon and the other great tropical forested areas, or the boreal forests dying back with beetle attack and, and great forest fires. Oh, and the release of methane from layers under the sea and from under the thawing permafrost in the tundra. So greenhouse gases go right off the scale. There is nothing in the last 400,000 years of paleoclimate records that gives an inkling for this kind of behavior. Do you remember when, Boo, you opened up this forum, we had the picture of the man standing on the brink of the Victoria Falls, looking into a pool at its edge with his back to the great abyss, looking back upstream. Now, if climate scientists only model what happened back upstream, they have no evidence for the huge discontinuity, the tipping point of the Victoria Falls. And if they argue from the back down the stream or up towards the source of the river, you will have no ability to predict what happens next. And if that man is looking back up the Zambezi and confidently walks backwards into the future, looking at the past, there will come a point where he tips into accelerated catastrophe. And then there's only a tiny window of intervention when he can regain his balance and come back again. We're at that point.